Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2022 AP Chemistry for your response question number six. This is from the May 2nd AP Chemistry exam, May 2nd, 2022. And uh, make sure you check out MrAiden.com. Uh, again, I have hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of questions, uh, for your response questions that align with the exam, multiple choice questions that align with the exam. Uh, I know tons and tons of teachers have bought access and they love it. So have students. Uh, but let's get to this question. This question you can see is a, a calori or colorimetry question, a spectrophotometry question. And you can see a student wants to determine the concentration of potassium permanganate or a permanganate ion. So I'm going to change my pen into purple so that I can determine the optimum wavelength. What's the optimum wavelength is where it absorbs the most, uh, the most light. And that is about 525 nanometers. And that is the optimum wavelength that the student should use for their procedure. Okay, That's all question A was asking. Let's go to question B. Question B said the student uses a stock solution. So we have 2.4 times to negative 3 molar of potassium permanganate. And they want us to measure using this graduated cylinder. So remember how we measure using graduated cylinders. We want to look at the bottom of the meniscus right here. And we know we have 90. We know we have 91. We have 92. It is really close to 92. And so I could call that 92.0 milliliters. You'd be fine with 91.9. You'd be fine with 92.1. You'd be fine with all of those as long as you are estimating one value. 92.0 milliliters is what I got. And then you can see we want to uh, do a dilution, which means we're going to use our M1V1 equals M2V2. Why can we use that? Because we have a one-to-one -one molar ratio. And so we're allowed to use this for a dilution. And you can see we have 100 milliliters of 1.68. So 1.68 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And we're using 100.0 milliliters of that. So we got to make sure we, we multiply those because of means multiply. And those go together. And so I have on the other side 2.4 times 10 to negative 3 molar. That's my stock solution. I want to know the volume. I'm going to do a little mathematics problem and I get 70.0 milliliters and think about that logically. We take 70 milliliters of my concentrated stock solution. We put 30 milliliters of water in it. Uh, we're going to put that in a 100 mil volumetric flask and we would get a more diluted concentration of potassium permanganate. So logically it works out and uh, it works out mathematically as well. So here we see the student designs a, the following procedure to produce a calibration curve. So there, there you can see step one, they're preparing the, the standard solutions. Step two, they take that cuvette. And what are they going to do with that cuvette is they're going to rinse it out with distilled water, make sure there's no carryover. Then they're going to rinse it whatever standard they're using. So you make sure you rinse it a few times. And then you fill up that standard or that, that cuvette. You measure the absorbance, that absorbance goes through, some of it gets absorbed, some of it goes through, and we keep repeating. But guess what? We have something that's out of place. We can see this standard was a little bit less than what was on my curve. Okay, so think of it. If it absorbs more, that means we have we have something affecting the absorbance. We have uh, maybe fingerprints on it, okay? Maybe we, uh, we mishandled and, and mislabeled something. But if it's less, that means my solution is absorbing less light, which means my solution must be diluted in some way. And so I think about that as question C comes about. And question C says this, assuming all lab equipment is functioning properly, identify which one of the procedural steps the student could have executed incorrectly to get this, the marked point. So it is exactly what we're seeing. And justify your answer, we need a claim. Okay, so step something uh, was executed incorrectly. Okay, so that's my claim. What is my evidence? My evidence is uh, the uh, marked data point has a lower absorbance of light th 
than it should have. Okay? It and what does this mean? This mean we're going to the reason for the meaning of this. This means this lower absorbance value uh, has resulted from a lower concentration. Therefore, the uh, the cuvette at this, or the sample, I should really say this, the sample, the standard, the the standard sample must be slightly diluted in some way. If the student did not rinse the cuvette, remember we put in water, distilled water, we rinsed it out, but then we rinse the cuvette with the standard solution. If the student did not rinse the cuvette with the standard solution, some of the distilled water from step two would have diluted the standard sample. Okay, so what was the big main problem step? That was step number three, wasn't it? Step number three. The student didn't do step number three. They rinsed with water, some water carried over. Step three, they did not rinse properly with the standard solution and anytime you have a justify your answer we need claim we need evidence we need reason and that m ensures that you're giving the AP the College Board reviewers um, a full AP chemistry answer so hope that helped that was question number six on the 2022 AP chemistry free response exam I'll catch you for number seven that's the next video coming up